Welcome back. You are now watching the political segment of the weekend show. The topic of discussion is how to build a nation. Nation building, as we all know, involves a shared sense of national identity, building elements that tie people together, such as shared culture, language, and history. That can only be imposed from within the country. Large, diverse nations have a harder role to hold in creating national identities. Nigeria is a prime example where little effort has been expended on national nation building with resulting dysfunction and intergroup violence, while the United States is an example of a diverse nation where people feel a sense of national identity, not because of shared ethnicity or long-standing cultural history, but because of a shared set of ideals. Joining me on today's program to discuss this topic, we have Comrade Adamu Abbas Aman, who is the Student Representative Council President at Bayes University. Welcome. Thank you. We also have Osundu Chilago, who is um, one of the directors at the Nation Builders Forum Nigeria. Welcome. Thank you. You're most welcome. So this issue of nation building is one that has been um, quite topical for many decades. But we seem to still be having the discussion because we've not been able to build a national ideology in this country. Um, when we look at the definition of nation building, having a shared ideology that we're each working towards um, as a people, um, I believe it's absent in Nigeria. So who is responsible for defining shared ideology? for Nigerians. I'll start with you, Sundu. Well, you just said it. Um, it's actually a sad commentary that uh, we are in um, the situation we find ourselves where we don't make uh, or, or quite, we made quite a feeble attempt at nation building. We've done a good job, a bad job at that. We just uh, a mass of people, over 200 ethnic groups uh, with a lot of diversities, but we've not made efforts to harness uh, in, in, in a very constructive sense, the benefit of this diversity. This is where we have this problem. The problem of who we are, who is a nation, what do we tag, who do we tag a nation? Is it just a mass of Igbo, Yoruba, this ethnic nationality? No, it's, that is not what it is. A nation is actually people with, just like in your opening remark, people shared um, values, shared uh, ideology, they, they've come to identify with um, certain things that are common to them all. So it involves a bit of cultivation, a bit of direction, a bit of, um, how would I call it, understanding across all divides, across all this culture. So I think as, uh, as Nigerians, what we call ourselves, we even have a problem of self-definition, really. When you say someone is a Nigerian, who is a Nigerian? Uh, am I a Nigerian because I'm Igbo? Or am I a Nigerian from Igbo extraction? This problem of self-definition has lingered with us for a long time right uh, now. So we, we don't seem to know, we don't seem to point our finger to say, um, are we a nation? Because those ingredients, those things that need to be you know, addressed in the quest for nation building, sadly, have not been, nothing has been done about it. Um. You raise a very fundamental point. That's why I want to bring in Comrade Adamu here. I was reading uh, an article published by Harvard Business School which stated that in order to build a nation, you have to sort of play a blind eye to some past atrocities that has occurred within the nation, with, within the country. Um, so we all know about the civil war. We all know the agitation um, for Biafra and how the Igbos particularly feel like a conversation still has to be had. You know, a lot of people have not a lot of people, the government in particular, dare I, dare I say, has um, sort of quieted the noise about having a conversation about building a nation after the civil war. It just, we just pretended like it didn't happen. Um, but this study by Harvard Business School stated that these are one of the tactics to build a nation, you know, playing a blind eye to atrocities that have been committed in previous governments within that nation. Do you agree with this? Yeah, I cannot agree more on that. First of all, good morning viewers. Uh, thank you AIT for inviting me here. I have known few greater honors than this. Uh, when we started this show, you raised a very important point that uh, we have to do it ourselves. Freedom and development cannot be imposed from without. It must be won by the people themselves. 
To build a nation is not something that happens within a blink of an eye. It is a gradual process. Societies evolve and this evolution have never been in a straight jacket form. To build a nation, certain things must be put in place. With the little knowledge that I have had of this country over the years, I'm convinced that Nigeria have all the potentials to be one of the frontline uh, front nations in the world, but we're just yet to be there. However, to build a nation, you have to consider it from four dimensions to it. The security dimension, the political dimension, the economic dimension, and the educational dimension. For every nation to prosper, the protection of life and property is very paramount. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we found ourselves in serious security challenge. We must, we must not shy away from this fact. I'm not saying that it's just the responsibility of the government alone. It's the responsibility of all and sundry. We have to come together and face this challenge if truly we want to build a, a greater nation. Talking about the political dimension, our government and our political institutions need to be greater than they are now. If you look at countries like America, Britain, etc., they are one of the frontline nations in the world because they have a very strong political institutions. Unfortunately, we don't have the same. We all have to work towards the independence of our judiciary as well as other forms of government. We have to strengthen our electoral system to ensure legitimacy of the government at the federal, state, and local government levels. Talking about the economic dimension. Strong economy is the backbone of every strong nation. We, have <laughs> we are in economic turbulence in Nigeria, I'm sorry to say that. Uh, so we have to diverse our economy. This cannot be uh, guaranteed in the absence of basic infrastructure like road, good road, electricity, good education, uh, healthcare system, employment opportunities, and so on. If you look at uh, uh, the educational dimension, you see any society who is not well educated and well enlightened is a society that is not ready for development. Unfortunately, in this country, you hardly find people who wants to teach, who wants to teach in Nigeria. Most of our teachers are accidental teachers. Any society whose teachers are accidental teachers is bound to be fed with uh, miseducation and diseducation. So I'm glad you've talked about the political, social, economical um, aspects of building a nation, but no. my question specifically was, do you agree with the study that says that we need to forget past atrocities in order to move forward as a nation? Of course, yes, we have to do that. We have to do that. We have to come together because this is a problem that only we can solve. And, and in order to forget it, let me bring you in here. Do we have to first have a conversation about it before we then forget it and move on? Is, that, is it possible? Do we just say, okay, this happened, we all know it personally, but we're not going to acknowledge it as a nation in order for us to build and move on? Yes, I, I, I think um, we need to have a national conversation. But sadly, we, our nation is what it is today, not because of this conversation. A lot of times we have a report, we have conferences, national conferences that uh, seem to highlight some of the failures of our past. But go and check them, where are they? A lot of they are consigned to the dustbin of history. We just repeat that same drama of um, appearing to talk, but we need to have a genuine conversation. Really, the, the bad events of the past should not uh, signpost our future, but we should pick a few things from there. Mm. Uh, for example, the civil war. We shouldn't forget that people fought a war of attrition for these four years because of the courage of their conviction. There no, the, at the end of the war, it was said that no, no victor, no vanquished. But the truth is, the positives we can take from the war is that people fought for certain conviction they feel they have. We should harness that. It should be in our history books. We, it should be in our curriculums. You know, uh, why I said there have been feeble or no intention to build a nation in this country, and, and that burdens me a lot. 
that was why one of my books I wrote recently on uh, a great nation is possible. I try to state that there are fundamentals. You can't build a nation in the, in the air. You can't build something on nothing and expect it to truly stand. There are fundamentals. What is your view on integrity? You need integrity to build a nation. You need good followership to build a nation. You need tolerance. You need uh, accountable leadership. You need, uh, you need to stem corruption to build a nation. These are core values, cornerstones. If you say you are building a nation, how are you building it? It's not by coming on air on the television set. You need to put certain measures. And if these things are not done, and sadly too, he mentioned something about the uh, curriculum. Now, we, we, we have a lot, our diversity in this country is not being harnessed. And, and, and sadly too, we run a curriculum that, I don't know whether we still do history in our schools, but I think in our history book, in our curriculums, we need to mention the positives of that war. We need to mention, talk about the beauty of our people, the industry of our business people, the, the fertility of our land, the river Niger. There are a lot of things that should imbibe that, that, that should inspire patriotism from deep within us. We see a lot of bad news when you, N N Nigerians feel we live in a sense, uh, you know, of you know despondence. Or, or some people will even rightly say this is a post-patriotic Nigeria. What has Nigeria done for me, really? Why should I be? Why don't I just go to Canada? Mm. People are really, really incensed, and rightly so because nothing is on the ground to give. It's true we are far off from where we should be, but. If we want to build a nation, we need to ask this fundamental question. What do we want to do about patriotism? Do we respect, do we have national values? You, you see the, 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 the graveyards of people who pay the supreme price for this country is littered. Or they, they live in unmarked graves. People literally have forgotten everything they've done mm. for this country. But we just seem to be forging ahead. What are we doing? Just let's get and share. Let's get and share. No attempt to redefine who a Nigerian is. No attempt to point people to national values. No attempt in our curriculum to tell us who a Nigerian is. Because people say, are we a natural construct? Or are we just an accident of our amalgamation? Mm. Are we just a business empire put up by the British just for colonial ease of you administration? Know, and perhaps when, when people say that, they forget developed countries such as you know the United States of America, which is a very diverse nation. You have the Irish, you have the Native Americans, you have people that have come from all parts of the world to make up one strong, powerful entity. But the reason they survive and you know, live in harmony is because of the fact that they have a national identity. You speak to an ordinary American and he or she thinks the nation is the greatest nation in the entire world. So people participation and people's percepti per perception is also a very key indicator and aspect of nation building. So as a student, how do you go about, as the president of your version of your SUJ, how do you go about building the mindset of your fellow students to start to think of Nigeria differently? Yes, we are the poverty capital of the entire world. Yes, by 2050, we'll be the third largest nation in the entire world. But how do we start to shape the minds of Nigerians to know that they play such a key component in fixing the issues they are affecting us? And to build a nation, we need their full participation, full commitment to move this country forward. All right, thank you very much for asking me that question. Uh, you know, just like the president once said that uh, we have no other country other than Nigeria, and therefore we have to work together to fix it. The first thing that I think is very essential is creation of public awareness. We, 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 we need to be patriotic. We need to see this country as our own. We are a very divided nation, unfortunately. And just like you said, it's something that we need to see talk together, talk about it, and prefer solutions to it. We are a very divided nation, and it's even getting worse, because I believe 20 to 30 years ago, we were not as divided as we are now. Mm. So uh, we have to uh, use our diversity as a source of strength. We, it's possible for people to be united by their differences, instead of divided, uh, sorry, it's possible for people to be united by their ideas, instead of divided by dif their differences. It is possible for hearts to change and for all hatred to pass. And therefore, we as youths, we have to, we have to create that awareness. Let people know that, look, this is the way forward. And how we are have you to doing do that? Uh, first of all, this is another way of doing it, mm -hmm. talking to people on this. Uh, but not just that. You have to uh, uh, organize uh, seminars, 
Go people, hit the street, talk to as many people as you can mm. and try to convince them to change that mindset. Mm. Awesome. Well, I believe that you wield a very powerful position in your university, Bayes yeah. University. Yes. And uh, I would throw it back to you to yes. go back and form, you know, uh, forms uh, such as this yeah, and actually it, talk to the students because it starts with them. Mm -hmm. It starts with where you can actually catch them early and actually have these conversations that matter. I'll give you the final word, Osundu. What's your solution to uh, nation building? You know, you know at, at times like this, it's actually difficult to inspire hope. I, 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 you know, when you look at the state, of, uh, the state of the nation and all of that, but I will tell people that, be proudly, I tell people I'm in Nigerian, my blood is truly green. I've spent, uh, I've committed over 17 years of my life into the course of nation building. I still, I'm still one of those people that believe that Nigeria has what it takes to become the, 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 the toast. Nigeria is actually the toast of the world. There is something about us, our diversity, that makes us the, both the fear and dread of other nations of the world. They look at us, but they imagine that we are just like that elephant with that feet of wood, that mass that is, that is refusing to grow. But I believe that if we pay attention to certain cardinal principles, where are we on integrity? Where are we on tolerance? We, don't, we need to have a tolerance framework. We need to redefine who the Nigerian person is. We need to tell ourselves, tell our students, tell our children that we are beautiful people. We need to tell our children that our mothers are great. We need to tell our children that our, niche, our, 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 our business people, they have that sagacity. We need to tell, we need to change the narrative. The narrative presently is too negative for anything productive And to I guess come. this is the answer to the very first question I asked you. Who is responsible for doing this, which is all of us? Citizen participation. Exactly. Citizen. So, Ndu Abbas, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, the weekend show today. You can follow us on social media at Weekend Show NG on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, quick shout out to my nieces, two year old nieces who are watching, uh, Shegun and Sheon and Daniela. Thank you so much for watching today's program. We'll see you next week. Helping us to sign out today, we have Oiza and May. Take it away. <laughs>